Good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. <coughs> Excuse me. I am your host, Krista Porter, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly webinar series where we cover a variety of topics that may be of interest to libraries. Uh, the show is broadcast live every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time, but if you're unable to join us on Wednesdays, that's fine. We do record the show, and then it is posted to our website for you to watch at your convenience. Um, and I'll show you at the end of today's show where our website is and where you can access all of our archives. Uh, we post their um, recording of the show. We record it and post it to the Nebraska Library Commission's YouTube channel, so you can watch the show that way. And any um, document slides, um, the slides that uh, we have here on the screen, we'll have it. Is that a link you have there to your um yes okay. it is we will link to that um afterwards so you'll have access to both the recording and the slides to view um later oh <clears throat> excuse me we do a mixture of things here on encompass live uh book reviews interviews uh, mini tra training sessions demos of services and products things that we think you might be interested in um, sometimes we do things that are very specific to nebraska as we are the nebraska library commission for those of you who are uh, joining us from out of state um, and we provide services to all types of libraries in the state so we have things for um, public academic k-12 um, Correction facilities, museums, um, you'll see anything and everything on our show. Our only real criteria, if you can even call it that, is it something to do with libraries. Um, something libraries are doing, something cool we want to show off that they're doing, something we think they should be doing. Um, so you can find all sorts of things on there. Um, as I said, we do do some things that are specific to Nebraska and to the Nebraska Library Commission. So we have Nebraska Library Commission staff that come on and do um, sessions with us sometimes. But we also bring in guest speakers, and um, that's what we have this morning. Um, join us today is Beth Cavish. Good morning, Beth. Good morning, Krista. And she is with our educational service units, uh, specifically the coordinating council of ours. We have multiple ESUs across the state. I'm not really sure how many total. 17. 17, okay. A lot, yeah. Um, and she is their director of blended and distance learning there. And she's going to talk to us this morning about OER. What is it? Some of you might know. Some of you might need to know. We'll find out. <laughs> so I'll just hand it over to you, Beth, and uh, take it away and tell us all about it. Very good. Thanks, Krista, for, um, for that introduction, and good morning. Um, it is very, very windy here, but uh, um, hopefully our weather will, you know, not be the bomb cycle that we got a couple weeks ago. <laughs> yes, we um, have weather coming in across the state. Yes. Sure yeah. But to, yeah, but today we're really going to talk about uh, OER and OER is not outstanding extraordinary raw materials just saying but uh, so many people question so what do you mean by OER so today we're going to uh, I'm just going to review some of the the information that I have and that I've been sharing across the state as well as some resources that um, I'm, that you could use to do more research or uh, find some of these uh, OER types of resources as well. I would encourage you to go into this bit.ly um, now because uh, in a couple slides we're going to ask you to just introduce yourself and uh, share with me one of your um, answers to a question. But as Krista said, um, okay come on you can go to the next slide. There we go. Uh, I am the director of blended and distance learning for our ESU coordinating council. We, because we have some people registered from outside of Nebraska, just want to share our ESU is an educational service unit. We are regional service centers providing um, resources for our K-12 public schools across the state. As you, you may uh, assume, Nebraska is very rural, so we have a, many, many small districts. And those districts, I'm yes. sorry. We got a new phone here, and I don't even know how to um, change it. Sorry. Oh, my gosh. Um, anyway. <laughs> um, there we go. Okay, so we have a lot of rural districts that do not have the resources for a number of things that an ESU can provide. And the coordinating council then really coordinates some statewide projects which blended learning and distance learning are two of those statewide projects and therefore I am uh, kind of the coordinator and the director of those. Um, so again, I wanna know who is here and if you were able to log into that bit.ly, 
then um, and maybe um, Krista, I don't know if you wrote that down or anything. I'll go quite quickly back to it and maybe I can, if you could write that down and share it in the question piece so that everyone can see it again. Um, <coughs> I logged into it here, so. Oh, awesome, awesome. So uh -huh. what I want you to do on the next slide here, which says add yourself, is to uh, add your name and just your first name and last initial if you want, and then maybe a quick answer to one of these questions. So one of your go-to resources, or maybe what you have experience with OER, or if you want to describe it in three words, not using what the words for OER <laughs> mean. And then a last one, maybe why you're, you're here. So uh, I have added my own here that my go-to resource is hippocampus.org. So if you are in the, um, um, in the slide deck, and in the edit, oh, you know what? I said to view only, I know that. Um, let me, well, you know, here we go. I'm gonna reshare it so that you can edit that. So my apologies, I thought I was being so smart. Sure, no problem. Um, there we go. And now, if you reload or if you um, go back and refresh your browser, then you should be able to access that. So I know that we have five people, right, Krista, that were logged in. Nine, we're at nine, very good. If you want to just go in and add your name real quick and uh, get, answer one of those questions, that would be awesome. And I'll go ahead and go back to that, that um, slide. So again, one of your go-to resources, and not all four of these questions, just pick one. Um, maybe some experience, what you would describe OER as, or why you're here. So I'll just give you a, a, a minute or so to enter that. Let's see here. So should I add something for mine? Yes, I would love that. <laughs> And I'm going to go out of presentation mode because I think that will allow me to see. Excellent. Very good. Wants to hear how people are using OER. Excellent. So everyone, if you can go. Um, I will present. Did I get the link here? No, that's not it. And here is the, the bit.ly right here, bit.ly slash two, and that's a capital yeah. P, yes. 18, lowercase d, uppercase d, lowercase j. Yes, when you're doing these bit.ly's, the uppercase and lowercase does that's matter. Right. Yeah. It does. Case matters, yes. Very good. So, anyone's looking for it, I've sent it in the chat too. Okay, awesome. The, um, okay. And the question, okay. let's see, I'll we'll do it here too. I'll let's go back it. and just check one more time. So, everyone, go ahead and go to that link and then go yeah. and you'll just go down to the slide. Um, it's a fifth slide on there and you can type yep. in. I know, um, that's what I'll oh. Okay. Well, we'll go ahead and go on, Krista. It doesn't look like it. maybe um, some people are having difficulty getting into Google or Bitly. So we'll just go ahead and go on. There's one coming um, in, and I've got one here, actually, I'm going to do. Um, Yay. Hi, from. April. Hi, David. Nope, and there's another person typing okay, in there. I want to find out what it is. Super, yeah, like and Allison. Yay. Yay. Do both the chat and questions. So, okay, good. Give us some good. thoughts about what you're doing. And there's another one. Great. 
So we want to hear more about open ed. We want to find out what it is. Um, I'd like to know more and here to just learn. Excellent. Well, hopefully we will be a able to answer A lot of people, those. as, as yeah. Alice is just getting started, it looks yeah, like. Yeah, exactly. Good, oh, good. Good. Well, Marilyn, from the library standpoint, as opposed to from the educator right. standpoint. Right, right. Mm -hmm. Good. That's true, because this All is right. something that is mainly towards the um, actual teachers, but uh, right. yeah. Right. So I was, uh, I think I've, I have a pretty good idea where we're at. I feel that we're kind of learning and we want to learn, um, you know, not yet using perhaps. So I think we're we're at a good level. And hope, then I also feel that what my goals were today should match up with uh, your needs of those that are attending. So we really want to talk about this OER phenomenon or, or go open phenomenon, I guess. Uh, be a little familiar with Creative Commons because it really has an impact with um, when we talk about open education resources and how we can access the items. And then I just wanted to share a little bit about what Nebraska is doing in terms of our K-12 education space and um, that creating or curating or sharing those OER uh, pieces. So uh, go open or hashtag go open. And, and sometimes you hear people say, what is goopin? Well, it's go open and it was a initiative really from um, former President Obama in um, like 2016, 2015, 2016 to really uh, allow for schools to consider going open or using open education resources. So after that initiative of go open, then the Office of Ed Tech uh, began working on, re on some materials for schools to have access to and the go open districts um, that link and, and by the way this this uh, link on this presentation goes to the office of ed tech but um, there is a launch packet for districts that wanted to sign up to be go you know to be open or to use a, an open ed resource um, to have access to. So, so the, the Federal Department of Education really got involved and was the instigator, if you will, or the, you know, one that really was driving some of this uh, discussion on hashtag go open. And so go open really reflects or refers to this notion of using open education resources. And here is a, um, a quick video. And Krista, we can this will work, won't it? Or should I just uh, um, capture it? It depends, I, uh, it depends on how your audio is, because yeah. sometimes the sound doesn't come through, like when you're wearing uh -huh. a headset. Sure. So let's just, that. I'll just capture this video. And because you have the bit.ly, you guys can access that video later on. But it's really, um, you know, giving that talk. And this is, again, K-12 uh, really, um, focused on uh, why a school or why a teacher should consider using open education resources. So I think it's like three some minutes long. It, it's good and you can share that with other people, but um, it, it's a yeah, good that's introduction. Nice. It does have um, in the video, I just was looking at it at the in the slides, um, it does have, you can turn on the closed captioning to see um, oh, what it okay. said yeah. too. Yeah, does it have a transcript? I don't know. Um, but I think it's fine. You know, I think that um, you should be able to, everybody got into the slide deck, so you should be able to access that video. Um, so what is open education? Uh, the Hewlett Foundation talked about, has this big, huge, long de definition of what, you know, open education is. It's materials and medium that are in the public domain, that have open licenses, that are no cost. Um, that you can remix, basically, and it is used to support our knowledge. But really, it's non-proprietary. So um, even though I may have created it, uh, you could remix my, my resource, and then you could become the owner of your own new resource. Um, it depends on how we are, are licensing 
the resource as to who really, you know, if you want to think about ownership and those kinds of things. But I am, if I create something that I want to share, I'm giving it freely. I'm not putting any cost on it and I'm giving certain permissions and we'll talk about those permissions. It's always shareable. So uh, you would be able to take and to, again, remix it or revise it or use it as is if you wanted to modifiable and reusable. So that's really the basis of what, when we talk about OER in Nebraska K-12 educators, we are really sharing this, this type of uh, statement. But in terms of what could be considered open, uh, a open resource, it's really a big, huge gamut. You know, it could be the entire course, it could be sections of a course, it could be a textbook, um, video pieces, you know, software. And I think we've heard of open software for years and years and years. Um, but it's just really um, a great, you know, a greater uh, level or um, gamut of resources that we would be able to share and then to remix. So when we think of OER and versions of OER, we've really gone through maybe stages of what it looks like. And initially, our, you know, one of our first things were kind of type textbooks and they just were all text and, you know, no interactives and no visuals to it. And then it went to more of a hypertext. So then we could link and we could make these hyperlinks and we could add some things. And now um, we're really into that enhanced text that so we're adding those videos in and again, sticking with the um, um, images and the hyperlinking, but every step of that, that whole movement of open education has made enhancements. And if you've, you know, Wikipedia is one of, you know, what we might think of as an open encyclopedia. If, if you were on it years and years ago, it was very, you know, very um, just text. And now it's become more dynamic, I guess you could say. But um, things that you could access again includes courses, whole courses and universities have been doing this for a number of years. MIT uh, has been sharing their coursework for years and years. Um, uh, you know, they, they just feel that some of their work uh, is needs to be shared and they want others to see. Videos, Khan Academy, uh, Saul Khan has, has really grabbed that whole thought and concept behind, you know, open learning and taking it to that, that complete next level. He even has courses and um, uh, assessments and things like that uh, in, uh, added to his, his collection of resources in Khan Academy. Again, we talked about encyclopedias and some of the, the you know, when we think of non-proprietary, but some of the, the proprietary uh, encyclopedias have also considered opening up some of their their work to uh, open education. But those benefits are, are really why I think we are moving toward that particular movement. And it's because of the collaboration and the community be behind learning or the community of learners um, behind this education. So can we partner with others? Can, can Krista develop something that I found that meets my needs and then I can go and enhance that and share it back with Krista? So we can collaborate or work independently as partners um, and really build on a resource that's even better than just one of us could do. Again, you know, I'm able to share with you some of my knowledge and expertise. The cost, <clears throat> excuse me, the cost is prime is a primary piece of purpose or reason why why uh, educators or in, um, educational organizations are moving to to OER. But I do want to share with you that when you think of the cost of the resource, yeah, the resource itself might be free, but you still have to begin to implement and to determine how that will be implemented into your your organization and that's what 
has the cost behind it. So you don't want to forget about the cost of implementation because um, that really impacts what you uh, are doing. So um, improvements, independent learning, and again, that community engagement. Why schools tend to embrace this OER is because it really increases that equity. So again, as I talked about in Nebraska, we have all these rural schools that may not have accessibility, the same levels of accessibility that students in, in our metropolitan cities do. And so by utilizing an open education resource, we could consider conceivably increase that equity across our state or you know anywhere that students would have access to this information or resource. Um, one of our big things that we really are promoting is how, how it's relevant. So in the video, it talks about um, textbooks, you know, purchase textbooks and how soon or how they become obsolete or their co content is no longer relevant or doesn't fit into what, what you're teaching in terms of maybe your state standards or whatever you're dealing with. So we can keep that content relevant because we can always be changing and updating and revising. And it's the teachers that are doing that. So we are empowering and giving those teachers those resources. And that's where the money becomes, again, you know, an issue. But we're trying to empower those teachers to, to build this content. I've included, uh, this is a slide from a friend of mine, but I've included that SAMR model because um, when you think of implementing or integrating technology into your curriculum or into your learning, um, that, that low level, which is substitution, um, is very, very easy to do. And so you might think of using an OER, an open resource as a textbook, let's say, or as your curriculum, that really it could be considered a substitution for a regular textbook. But what is it in, within that resource that you are using that makes that even more enhanced? Or how does technology become included in that resource that it was not in the uh, the actual physical textbook. So we're always thinking about technology integration with these types of resources when we're um, sharing with our schools and our teachers. So we've talked about, you know, open education is, um, there's no fee required or, um, you know, textbook fee or textbook price on it, but it um, doesn't always mean that it's open. So if someone were to offer a resource but puts a a license on it that is that is restrictive that would not be open we would not be able to reuse it or revise it i guess we could reuse it but we not would not be able to revise it or remix it and then redistribute it if we were so open is really the free pieces plus the ability to retain, reuse, revise, remix, and redistribute. So there is a difference between free resources and open education resources. So um, again, you know, these are pieces that, that the five R's that are always shared when we talk about open, um, but more of a define or a definition with each of those. And I think they're, um, uh, you know, you can read that and it, and it describes those well enough. So um, before I get into this, I just wanted to see if there is any questions. Krista, are we doing okay so far? Oops, I don't uh, yeah. do that. I wanted to uh, does anybody have any questions um, about uh, what Beth's already talked about, about what, what we know so far about how we are, or about Creative Commons? I know that is something that's... Um, it seems to come in, in, in ways that people are always talking about Creative Commons and things like that, and then um, everybody seems to know about it for a while, I guess. <laughs> and then more presentations about, hey, don't forget, this is something you can do. And it's a very good thing to make everything you do. I mean, we have our show here, so everything that we post for the commission onto our YouTube account is um, Creative Commons licensed as well for people to use if they want to, um, for non-commercial non purposes, since we're, you know, 
uh -huh. agency yeah. here as well. But if anybody does have any questions or comments or thoughts about what you've done or anything, go ahead and type into the questions section of your GoToWebinar interface. Um, or if you want to uh, use a microphone, just say, please unmute me, and um, you can ask your question or make your comment that way. But nothing has come in at the moment. Yet. Okay, excellent. Yes, so, type in as you think of something, and we'll grab it as you do. Right, perfect. So again, in order to achieve those five R's, then you need some kind of licensing. Even, even though we say that these resources are open and so anybody could use it, it really still has a license on it. And, and you would want, if you were to create something, you would want to put a license on it so that others could use it in the way that you would define. And we do that through our Creative Commons licensing. And, um, and it also saves you, I've had this as something I think is helpful, that if you put that on there and have that notice or whatever the symbols on it, they don't have to ask you. Right. It saves exactly. both time on both of your sides. If you've created this thing, you've decided I want it to be able to be used in this way. Someone who comes across it doesn't have to figure out how to reach out to you and then ask you a question. Am I allowed to? What can I do? What can't I do? You've already given them that info proactively and um, saves everybody time. That's why I really like it. I'm always looking yeah. for the symbols myself on things. <laughs> Right, exactly. So Creative Commons licensing then has different levels. And so you see these levels of way open to, you know, somewhat restricted. And we'll talk about those. And, and basically, we're going to go through what Nebraska has determined what they want to use Nebraska K-12 for any of the resources that they are creating and curating. But um, the four key pieces is uh, attribution. So, um, are you going to, uh, you know, are you going to require attribution? And by the way, I just when I share with uh, teachers and students, I always, even if it's not required, um, I think it's always um, best practice. Um, and you know, for me too, because I would want to know where I got that. So, um, but are they requiring attribution? Is this for no commercial? So, so or non-commercial. So, in other words, any you know nonprofit educational institution could use this, and um, you know that, but you can't charge for it basically. And we see a lot of teachers pay teachers. So, if you would define something that is Creative Commons licensing with non-commercial, they can post it on Teachers Pay Teachers. It just has to be free. It can't be for a, a value. No derivatives. Again, you know, I want you to use this exactly as it's created. I don't want you to make any changes. And there are a few things that would be appropriate for no derivatives, and I've created some of those myself. Um, but that does that defeats our whole purpose of you know remixing and and. Uh, Redis we can redistribute, but we can't remix if we put no derivatives. And then finally, the share alike is that if you're going to remix and redistribute this, it has to have the same kind of licensing that I granted on my original material. So those are the four key things that we are using and, uh, and that Creative Commons um, bases their licensing on. And in Nebraska, again, our recommendation is to to say that you know we would want you to um, license this CC BY, which means that yes, please sh please uh, say who you know give that attribution. Um, this is non-commercial. This is for educational resources, and we don't want anyone to make any profit off of this. And if you do redis remix and redistribute, to please use the same licensing. That is our recommendation. But we've also had a secondary that would say um, no derivatives. So those are the two basic licenses that when we were when we're working with our Nebraska educators um, that we are promoting. Anyone could actually put any kind of licensing that you want on there. Um, it depends on your situation, but this, this is what we are promoting. And again, we're promoting this for teachers that are in school districts. And I'm, I'm not sure if you're Come if you have and and maybe in a, a library it would be the same that if you are under contract with an organization that organization really owns the rights to the anything that you create that is to be used for your your contract for your work so if a teacher was to create resource um, say a module for um, 
you know, for teaching um, um, about basket weaving and they wanted to share it, they could share it, but that administrator of that building or district would need to approve that they could share it because it really does belong to that district, uh, that school district that they are a contract with. So we also at the same time uh, have a policy for those schools that allow the teachers to create these resources and to share them as long as they're putting this kind of licensing on those, uh, you know, those modules or whatever they're creating. That's kind of complicated, I know, and, and if you have other questions, um, be sure to ask those and I could give more details on that. But I just wanted to share with you, these are the two licenses that we're recommending uh, when we do our, our work. Um, so again, this is our recommended. Let's uh, other people take it and tweak it and build upon it non-commercially, as long as they give credit to you or to whoever created it, and that it is shared under the same exact terms, or no derivatives, which is um, allowing others to download and share it with others, but the, and they have to give you credit, but they cannot make any changes on that. So. With that, we do have some challenges. You know, one of our biggest challenges is, you know, teachers, and, and this is such an interesting slide to me, that our teachers are spending seven hours a week looking for resources to use to supplement their, their content or their curriculum. They're using five hours a week to creating their own. So they're, you know, in my opinion, I was a classroom teacher. I would think I, you know, I need something to just kind of spark me. So I'm out there trying to find something to spark me. I might go find it and then I will either make my own or tweak that. But where are they, where are the teachers finding, where are they going for that seven hours? And it is determined that they're going 97% to Google, which, you know, is wide open. Um, we don't know if they're using those strategies about making sure that the content is accurate and um, appropriate and you know reliable. I, I would hope so, and I would make that assumption. They're also going to Pinterest, which I feel would be the same thing because then again, anyone can post onto there. 79% um, are going to Teachers Pay Teachers, but we have 39% that are going to Engage New York, which is a vetted open education um, resource collection. So um, what this slide tells me is again, that we're spending a, long, a lot of time trying to find those supplemental materials. And what it tells me is because we don't have that place or that knowledge about open education resources, that's why we're spending seven hours. If we were to be able to train or to um, um, suggest, strongly recommend our teachers to go to places like Engage New York, my expectation is that those hours of searching would be less and they could then start to remix and create those resources that are within you know, that are appropriate for their uh, curriculum. Yeah, it seems like a lot of this may be education, realizing that right. there are, as you described, the curated places rather than just, and they might not spend, it might not take them seven hours if they went to the more specific, the Teachers Pay Teachers or Engage New York places rather than just, I'm going to put in a big fishing net and right. see what I can hopefully right. find. Something. It might be able to save them some time if they just knew that this yeah. was, yeah. The places are the out there. Yeah. And I think that's all about how our libraries work together is, you know, because our patrons come in and say, you know, oh my gosh, I've spent seven hours looking for this. Where do I go? And so as our librarians become, you know, more experienced in this as well, we can then direct and guide them. I think it's all about educating our users and educating those that are in need of, of these open education resources. Mm -hmm. Um, so uh, I thought this was so appropriate. Hey, Mrs. Johnson, what are we doing in our technology today? Well, I'll be ready in just a few minutes. I'm still I'm still looking for that great activity on the internet, right? So I just kind of I thought that was uh, you know quite appropriate for that that conversation. But the other piece that our 
um, our Department of Education is also noticing is that so when our teachers or our people that are looking for those those resources in Google and Pinterest, they might be finding some some type of piece that fits their curriculum, but yet it may not be highly aligned or it is low you know, that the, the alignment to our standards is pretty low. And as you go through that, you'll see, um, you know, pay teachers pay teachers, but other OER repositories, we find that when we have a repository that can align to our standards um, and we can vet or we can evaluate those materials, obviously we have a better um, resource that we can use in our, our classroom or with our um, patrons that, meets their needs and is high quality. So those are the kind of the key things why we're using this open education concept uh, within Nebraska. Um, you know, as far as classrooms, all of this really fits in with our, our personalized learning as, as on the introduction, um, you know, I'm the, the director of blended learning for uh, the ESU Coordinating Council, so I'm trying to promote how teachers and classrooms can be utilizing technology and meeting students' needs by personalizing um, their instruction to meet them. And so open education also fits well within that concept of, of those strategies, those classroom strategies. But when you think of that digital versus digitized, um, and that goes back to that SAMR model again, OER could just be that replacement for the textbook. And that's really not moving us into a higher level or a deeper level of what we want to con concentrate or achieve. So we really wanna get to that digital side so that we can reflect, you know, we can make some comparisons, um, we can create, you know, we've heard of the four C's and creativity within that four C's that, and, and one of the pieces of the creativity is, is that retention of the, the content and the knowledge. Um, also being able to share and teach others because our, our, um, you know, our researchers say that when you teach others, you're really learning that content at a deeper and a higher level and to be able to make revisions. So we, we want to get to that part where it's digital and not digitized. But how do we do that? So where do we get these types of resources and where we, how do we go about finding them? Um, there are massive or, you know, very large number of open ed uh, repositories, and there's actually more and more coming out all the time. Um, the Learning Accelerator, which I, I did not add to this, and I'll, when we're done today, I'll go back and add um, their repository in there also, um, it, you know, is creating a open ed resource repository. So, so it's, it's, um, it's growing, it's expanding all the time. Um, and it's just about where to go and where to find it. This is a list that I got from um, the, um, the CCC OER organization that has open ed repository listed right here. Many of these are really for um, higher ed, but you'll see uh, Curriki and Guru are for the K-12 areas, but there's some more resources or places to go to start those types of searches. Um, but what Nebraska is doing is uh, working with OER Commons. And OER Commons is, I'm going to say, fueled by ISKME, I-S-K-M-E. And they um, are an organization that have been around for a number of years. Um, and they, and OERcommons.org has a, a expansive resource of these uh, open types of resources that are both K-12 and higher ed and public um, audiences. Why we went with um, OER Commons was that it was really cost effective for us to do. It was fairly easy to use. We were able to search on other resources and put them into a place that our Nebraska teachers could access. Um, anyone can get an account 
and the LTI integration was also important for us. But I wanted to um, take you here because this is our link to our um, hub. And just to give you a brief review of what Nebraska's put together, which is very similar to many, many, many states are going and using this particular repository. Um, so what we have in ours are Nebraska instructional materials. So these are K-12 materials that have been evaluated or vetted by those K-12 teachers and that have been endorsed by our Department of Education. And then these are collections from other kind, other resources or other organizations within OER Commons that we have um, added to our hub or our Nebraska link for OER Commons. Um, and here, remember we talked about Engage New York. And then also we have these working groups. So I think I mentioned earlier that open education is really about that community of learning. So the community of learning happens in these groups within our Nebraska OER Commons Hub. So we've just started working on this. We, we barely in a year and um, just starting to build resources around, um, you know, the open, concept that can be shared and remixed with classroom teachers. So Nebraska is just getting started. Other states uh, have been doing this for a longer period of time, but many of us in that K-12 arena are kind of in those beginning stages. Um, but this is just, uh, you know, we, we looked at other um, organizations and this one really just fit us the best as far as what our needs were and why we wanted to use that. But one of the things that having this hub gives us access to is all of the OER Commons resource. So if I wanted to look for um, a, a resource or some module or a course, it wouldn't really matter, within all of OER Commons, I would come up here to this yellow um, magnifying glass and I could do a search, but if I wanted to search for something that is strictly in Nebraska's uh, vetted or evaluated list, then I could come down here. Obviously, I've done some searching before in the blended learning area, and I could then, it would return to me any of those resources that have these kinds of tags. So these are things that we started to build um, and have access to within our, our Nebraska hub. So, um, let's see here. We're, come on. Um, I just wanted to share with you that, um, you know, once you put something into a repository such as OER Commons Hub, then, and you give it the licensing, that says that you can share it, that you can redistribute it, that you can um, remix it, all of those kinds of things, then, um, you know, this is, is what you're going to be able to do. You can share a link. So if I had this, this uh, uh, slide deck today, I could post that because it was, I could uh, license it Creative Commons, which Krista said all of the, our webinars are. I could share that link. I could print out any handouts if that's what I wanted to do. I could copy and paste any of these types of resources and I could integrate it into my learning management system or I could publish it in um, some kind of option um, as long as I was not looking for any you know, residual value for that. So if I, like for instance, Engage New York, you can make those published texts. You can have your printer print off books for your students. You just can't resell them or um, do any of those things with them. So um, here again are some resources from Iowa. I've done this presentation with a, a colleague from Iowa and Pennsylvania who are also getting started with the OER Commons Hub and at the same time. And so he had some resources that I just wanted to share with you. Um, but is there anything that we could review or um, go over again? Um, 
or have further detailed questions, um, any of that kind of piece. All right, um, let's see, does anybody have any questions? Any, um, let's see, anything you want more information about, anything you have any ideas about? Um, I'm gonna, nope. That was my timer, so I, I was trying to time myself and I did pretty good <laughs> for a 45. I wanted to time about 45 minutes so we could have some time for questions. Yeah, absolutely. So does anybody have any questions? Um, please type into the questions section anything you want to know more about. Um, as uh, what we said, uh, we could probably look back on those slides to see what people wanted to know. Um, mm -hmm. oh, yeah, great. You want to yeah. go ahead and share yeah, yeah. your screen again and bring it up? Oh. Um, trying to get to mind. There we go. La, 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 la. I don't know if I did that right. I don't think I did that right. So, okay. Here, let me, I'll make you a presenter uh, again. Yeah. yeah, make me a presenter yeah, again, okay. please. Yeah, there we go. Now. All right. Uh, all right, so let's go back. Sorry. You hope, I hope you won't get too ill. So anybody have anything more you wanted to know? It looks like a lot of people did want to find out what it was, learn more about it. Um, is there anything yeah. that didn't get covered that you were wondering about? Let us know. Um, now from so the I library did, standpoint, you know, I didn't really speak much about how would you use OER from the library standpoint. Um, I guess my thought is, you know, in, in libraries that I'm involved with, um, you know, they have programs, they have um, courses or, you know, those could all be shared, you know, through an open ed resource also and could be posted on something such as OER Commons or on their website, um, all those kinds of things as long as you license it. And maybe it's a, um, you know, a course within a learning management system that your library has. And you would, and it would be open for anyone to take that course. You could, um, you could say that this course is open between, you know, first quarter only. And so you have someone facilitating the learning uh, or so forth, but all of it is about, you know, open and not, um, not content that is purchased because we want to be able to modify it to fit our needs. Mm. Uh, someone does have a question about libraries. Um, how do you promote OER in a public library? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right, because you know we're really talking about in a public library. We're talking about those resources for patrons to come in and review that we've purchased, right? Mm. And so now we're talking about okay, these are open resources that kind of is against or you know is the you know the opposite of what we're trying to do but I think that when you know when our patrons are looking for that um, that piece of information that's that's current and sometimes our 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 uh, Print materials aren't may not be current, but we also then, as a library, do subscribe to our our uh, digital materials or our digital resources and databases and so forth, um, where that would be current kinds of information. But what we're what open education is is really taking. Um, it could take that same content, but then figuring out how to learn from that. So you could have a course on your library. So it could be an open education course on um, moving or learning about your library because the library. I'm fairly, yeah, I'm fairly confident that all of us as patrons don't know about all of the services. I mean, yeah, we could look at the flyers that we make uh, about the services, but yet I am not you know, versed in all of the services of the public library that I belong to. So if I wanted to learn more about that because I needed to, you know, because I have a desire to learn how to play a uh, instrument. So, you know, here could be this course around playing that instrument, for instance. So I could create this course and share it with, with um, the public library on how to 
um, learn how to play a button accordion and it mm -hmm. would be shared, you know, with everyone and, and others could learn, could take from it and grab it and, you know, remix from it. So it's all about the education and the learning. Mm -hmm. um, so that's how, but I could pull in some resources from my library. Um, it's just that those pieces are not the open, you know, those pieces if I were to pull in a database resource, the person that's using that course also has to be a member of that library because they would have access to that database. But if they were not, if I were to remix it and, and share it with someone from Iowa, then that becomes the issue of, okay, you know, that digital learning or that digital subscription resource isn't available. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah. So we're not trying to, um, um, you know, it's it, it's just about how do you build or how do you create those modules or whatever. And even those images that we saw, someone might be a creator of cartoons and they just want to share their work. Right. Mm -hmm. And they don't they don't need to have any kind of financial um, uh, receipt. They just want to share their work. And so that work then could be involved and um, included in any of the pieces of, of learning that we want to put together and mix for others. Mm -hmm. But yeah, uh, it, it, it's it's a fuzzy th place. <laughs> it is, yeah. Um, and that's good because we can develop it how we want, how we need to maybe. And, and exactly. Exactly. Remix yeah. and play with it and everything, yeah. Um, so thank you for that. Yes. Um, another question. Um, this, is, this person is a high school librarian and wants to know where would you recommend I go from here? Um, basically just getting started and, you know, what would be like first steps maybe? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I think going to um, OER Commons, if they're in Nebraska, um, you can go to that link and you can join our, our introductory group and that has some resources on how to manipulate through the OER Commons. Um, the, also within those that um, list on that graphic, uh, 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 do, 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 again I apologize for uh, here. These are great places to to also begin to find those resources instead of doing the Google and the Pinterest. You can look for here. Um, as far as you know, generating a learning module, OER Commons has that ability. It's called Open Author, and so you can just create an account within Open uh, OER Commons, and you can create a resource right there. Um, or you can create it in Google and then um, in open author you can bring it over and and it, it's a seamless kind of uh, marriage I guess so the the Google information will come over into the OER Commons um, platform and you could be able to share that way if you're trying to create something um, mm -hmm. You know, curating is really what we're trying to promote because, uh, I don't know, with me personally, I don't think I have the greatest ideas and, I, and it's, it's a struggle to start from scratch. So mm -hmm. I'm always trying to find where it is I can go to begin with. And when I use these resources, these are all open resources, I can pull them into my, my Google Doc, which I would there later take into... Um, OER Commons. So um, I think mm -hmm. that looking at it, you know, trying to find, I would start, you know, with, okay, so I want to create a module or I want to create a lesson and I want to be able to share that lesson. So I'm going to create this lesson in Google. I'm going to go find some resources that I want to use out here using Khan Academy or, or, and the, on this next page is a, you know, Hippocampus or Guru or Curricula or, or Flex, you know, wherever you want to go to mm -hmm. find some content, I would pull that into Google. I'd probably end up then going into OER Commons and sharing it that way. So I'm I'm curating all of these pieces and creating it and then sharing it. Uh, or the other option is to create an account in OER Commons and go search through that database, find something that makes sense, and then I'd probably remix it and use that. Yeah. And if so you're those not- Those are the two ways. 
I yeah, and for those of you who aren't um, in Nebraska, as Beth said, we have our own Nebraska one. Um, maybe your state has something similar to what right. we're doing that uh -huh. is specific exactly. for your um, educators. Uh, so search and see if you have you know, ESUs or Department of Education or whoever in your state right. does. Would, would potentially be in charge of something like this and mm -hmm. see if there is something specific to your state. And I think that was something that you did mention earlier too that I wanted to um, bring up, remind of that having the right, having your lessons and your curriculum meet the right criteria for where you are. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, there are a lot of these open ones are just anything out there that you can use, sure, but then you've got to look at if you are trying to meet some sort of standards locally make sure you're doing that at the same time. And by using something that's already um, put out by your state, like our Nebraska one is, you know you're getting things that already match up with that. Exactly. Yeah. So in the OER Commons Hub, there is a place, there's a place for hubs, and I just looked at all the hubs. So hmm. here, um, you'll see, see yeah. there, mm -hmm. Maryland, Minnesota. Right. Yep. Mm -hmm. So if you might be able to find a hub that's in your state and then uh, join that hub and then they will be aligned to your standards or, you know, appropriate exactly. for your state. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you for that. Yeah. Yeah. All right. We're almost hitting 11 o'clock here. Does anybody have any other last minute desperate questions you need to ask before um, we wrap things up? Type it into question section. Um, thank you very much, Beth, for being here yeah. um, and, and uh, telling us all about this. I know this is a, OER is a big buzzword out there, and it definitely lots of people. Obviously, you saw from their comments on the slide, many people still need to know what exactly is right. it. What am I supposed to do with it? How do I use it? Um, what can it do for me? <laughs> um, right. I'm glad that we finally got this down and out there for them all. Yeah. Good, good. So it'll be great to hear about anyone that's, you know, uh, experiencing, you know, learning through an open ed resource um, mm -hmm. on your Twitter handle. Yeah. Yeah, definitely share it to, to Beth if you saw when I shared this out onto Twitter um, and Facebook about today's show. I did link to um, Beth's Twitter there so you and, and to our educational um, service units uh, oh. council. Yeah. Yes. yeah. They, have a, they have a Twitter. Oh, so yeah. <laughs> Share everything everywhere, yeah. All right, so I think we will wrap it up for this morning then. Thank you very much, Beth, as you I bet. said. Thank you everyone for being here with this morning, uh, with us this morning. Um, this show um, is being recorded and will be on our Encompass Live webpage and popping over here to that. Um, Here's our upcoming shows for the next couple of months. And right underneath there is a link for our archives. Today's show will be at the top of the list here. Um, and it will have a link, as I said, to the um, actual recording on um, our YouTube channel and then a link to as there over here at the slides that link that bitly that was in the slides I'm just a link right to that so you'll all have access to this um, afterwards um, for the slides uh, when it is ready probably by the end of the day today I'll send an email out to all of you who attended today and everyone who was registered to let you know um, that is ready there I'll also post to our um, various social media um, we have a Facebook page here for encompass live so if you are a big Facebook user definitely give us a like over there uh, we post reminders as a reminder about logging into today's show, um, about our previous recordings that have been put up, when a new show is coming. So if you do like to use Facebook, um, give us a like over that and you'll be notified there, um, as well as out onto Twitter um, and, and everything there. Um, I'll also mention too, while we're here in the archives, this is the archives for the entire history of Encompass Live. Um, the show started in January 2009. So we've got a lot of things. Yeah, we're in our 11th year. It's kind of crazy uh, to realize that. Um, so if you scroll through this, you'll see the dates here on some of our shows. It goes all the way back to the beginning. So you can search, as you can see here, the archives. Um, the entire full archives are just most recent years worth if you want something really current and up to date. Um, but do be aware when you are searching this that you will find some things that are old. So everything has a date on it letting you when it was originally letting you know when it was originally broadcast. So take that into consideration. Uh, you may find some things where the service doesn't exist anymore, uh, URLs may be broken, things may have changed in a certain service or program or something. So just you know, pay attention to the original date when you do watch any of our archives. Um, but we are librarians. This is what we do. We save things and archive them and keep them out there. So we'll always have the whole full history there for you. Just you know, pay attention when you're looking at it. 
So um, that'll be for today's show. Um, and Beth will actually be back with us in two weeks. Um, so hopefully sign up for her next show, which is the second one here on April 24th, um, about uh, virtual field trips with Zoom. Yeah. Um, so if you're interested in learning how to do that, um, that's really fun. I've, I've, I've you know, seen some of them and done some of them before. Uh, so definitely sign up for that one. And next week's show will actually be uh, something about the National Rural Transit Assistance Program Resource Library. Um, this is a great resource, and especially for people areas like us who are rural in Nebraska, in the middle of the country, and especially with all of the flooding and damage and devastation we've had lately, this is going to be a great resource for people to find more information they've got uh, webinars and guides and all sorts of things so um, uh, definitely sign up and join us next week if you're interested in learning more about that library um, very and, timely <laughs> yes it was and it was you know, we scheduled this long before any of this these crazy mm -hmm. bombs like when we started happening <laughs> um, just very coincidentally we got a good timing on there so definitely sign up for that and any of our other shows so thank you everyone for attending thank you Beth and hopefully we'll see yeah. you next time on Encompass Live bye bye good to see you bye